For today's science activity, you are going to put together all of the skills that you have learned about researching animals, making claims about them, and using evidence to prove your claims with reasoning. So you're going to be reading some articles today. You will choose whichever animal it is that you want to research today. So you will see several different animals to choose from, but you only have to do one animal. And you will read the passage about the animal, and then you will fill out an animal research guide. So the animal research guide you will find out in your Google Classroom attached to the assignment. You had the slides, and then you have the animal research guide. So what I suggest for you to do to best help you complete the animal research guide while being able to look at your article about your animal is to do a split screen, which Mr. Bonacquisto actually just taught us how to do this during MCC this past week. If you forget, I will attach a slide um, right after this video on the next slide that has Mr. Bonacquisto's tutorial video in case you forget how to do the split screen um, on your computer. But if you don't decide to do the split screen, that's okay. That's just one tip to um, help you and I will show you how to do that as well as I go to complete the research guide myself. So for my example, the animal that I chose to be researching is the skunk. So I am going to read this passage and the whole time keeping in mind adaptations and what this animal does to help them survive in their environment. So read the passage with me. You may not have seen a skunk in your neighborhood, but you've probably smelled one. Their smelly spray called musk is not easy to ignore. The spray, which comes from two glands near the base of the skunk's tail, can hit a target 12 feet away. If you are lucky, you may get a warning before being sprayed. If threatened, skunks stamp their front feet, lift their tail, and growl. Some species of skunk even spring into a handstand before spraying, which puts the skunk's warning markings on full display. If the person or animal doesn't retreat, the skunk aims the spray at the eyes, allowing the skunk to escape. The spray can remain on its target for days. Skunks are nocturnal, which means they search for food at night and sleep in dens lined with leaves during the day. Their favorite foods include fruit and plants, plus insects, bird eggs, small rodents, and birds. Birds like the great horned owl prey on skunks. Scientists believe it's because the birds don't have a very good sense of smell, which makes the skunk spray useless in an attack. So now that I have read the passage about my animal skunk, I am going to use the animal research guide to answer some of the questions about what I read. So I'm gonna show you how I choose to use my split screen to best help me when I'm doing this. Because remember, we wanna use the CER claim evidence reasoning process to best help us answer these questions. So I'm gonna take the tab that has my slides here and I'm gonna click and hold down and drag till it becomes its own window. And now I'm gonna take and shorten this window so it's just about half of my screen here. Then the window where I have my tab with my animal research guide, those are the questions I'm gonna answer. I'm gonna click and drag that to the other half of my screen. So it's still not the, the best, but I can see both at the same time. So I know it's a little hard to read these questions here, um, but I can always try to shorten this if I need to, but if not, I can always make it a little bit bigger to help me see the questions a little better. All right, or to see the passage a little better. So the first question is, what special adaptations does the animal have to help it survive in, the, in its environment? Well, I definitely know that the fact that the skunk sprays, its um, sprays the predators or sprays when it's feeling threatened is definitely an adaptation that helps it survive. Oops, totally forgot to write my animal name up here too. 
So I'm going to start answering this question. And I'm always going to write in full complete sentences and turn the question around. So I'm going to restate the question in my response. You should be doing that too. The special adaptation that the skunk has to help it survive. Oops. And even adults, even teachers make mistakes on spelling survive. And it, oh my goodness, its environment is the fact that it sprays when it feels threatened or a predator is trying to attack. Spray smell can remain on its bit for days. Now, when you look at questions two and three, this is what can sometimes feel a little tricky when you're answering these questions. So the different adaptations, so your animal may have more than one adaptation. The one that this article really talks about for the skunks is the fact that it sprays its predators or it sprays when it's feeling threatened. It doesn't really talk about its coloring or its markings, but that could also be an adaptation for your animal as well if your article talks about more than one thing. So if my article talked about the coloring of my animal, well, that would be a physical part of my animal. That would be part of the physical body, the look, of my animal. So anything that relates to the physical characteristics, the arms, the legs, the tail, the coloring of your animals, the ears, that's all physical body parts. Now, question number three, when it says, are the adaptations a behavior that your animal uses? Is it a certain way that your animal behaves or acts or something like the skunk, where the skunk sprays when it's feeling threatened, that's a behavior. That is something that the animal has learned how to do as a behavior, as an action to protect itself. So the skunk spraying when it feels threatened is a behavior. The skunk, gotta fix my spelling. Miss Foley is not typing well today. Is a behavior that the skunk uses when it feels threatened. So you may have some adaptations that can go in the physical category and some that can go in the behavior category. Or like my article, there were none that were physical adaptations that were talked about but there were behavior adaptations that were talked about. So you may have ones that can go in both number two and number three, or you might only have one that goes in, you might only have adaptations for number two, or you might only have adaptations for number three. So you have to make sure to read really carefully and pay attention to the difference between physical, a part of their body that you can see, or a behavior, an action. And if you're confused about the difference between the physical and the behavioral, come back and watch this video. Listen to me re-explain that. Go rewind and you can hear me really explain the difference between the physical adaptation and the behavior. Then it says, if the animal didn't have the adaptations, what problems would it face? Well, I need to sit and think, what problems could the skunk face if it didn't have this adaptation of being able to spray its predators? Well, it might get eaten a lot more, or it might be attacked by predators a lot more often because it is small. It doesn't have long legs. It's not able to be super fast. So this animal may be preyed upon a lot more often if it did not have that adaptation as a defense. And then it says, what other animals have similar adaptations in your animal's environment? So I'm trying to think, are there any other animals that have a similar adaptation. Obviously, your article is not gonna to talk to you about that. This is where we want you to think. We want you to extend your thinking and think about what other animals do you know that have a similar adaptation, whether it's similar coloring or similar body features, the physical features or similar behaviors. So I can't think of another animal that sprays when it feels threatened, but I know that a porcupine 
will shoot out its quills when it feels threatened. So that's very similar to a skunk. So I would say that the skunk and the porcupine have a similar behavioral adaptation to each other. So you've now seen me give you an example of how to answer these questions after reading the article. And I have my article side by side my questions so I can be going back, rereading, re-listening to the passage. Remember, you only have to choose one animal and fill out all of the questions about your one animal. Remember the difference between a physical adaptation that has to do with what it physically looks like. It's colorings, it's ears, it's tails, it's arms, it's legs, it's spots, it's stripes. The behavioral adaptations are things that it does, it's actions, the behaviors that it has, certain noises it may make, or you know, if it hibernates, if it migrates, those are behaviors. And then you're gonna think about, well, what would this animal's life be like if they didn't have that adaptation? And if their animal has multiple adaptations that are talked about in your article, choose one of them, or you could talk about all of them and how it would affect the animal. And then in question number five, what animals have similar adaptations to yours? Once you have answered all five of those questions about your passage and your animal, you're all set with this lesson. But we are going to take this information and on your second lesson later this week, we're then going to build on from that and do the next part of this lesson. So whatever animal you choose for today's lesson, you're going to also still be using for our lesson later this week. Have fun.